In the previous lectures, we have learned how to add a validation on a form control using Angular's built-in validators. Now, in this lecture, we are going to learn how to create our own custom validators and how to use it on a form control. We will also learn what is an error code for a validator and how we can use that error code in our app for our own use. Every validator has an error code and an error code is nothing but a text which is returned by a validator when the validation fails on a form control. For example, on this first name form control, we are using the required validator. Now let me go ahead and open developer console. Let's clear everything and let's click on this submit button. If I go ahead and expand this form group, inside this we have this controls and here we have this personal details form group and inside this personal details form group we again have this controls and we have this first name control. So if you notice this first name control has this errors property and this errors property is an object and this object has this required property and this required property is nothing but the error code for the required validator. So since this first name field is required field and we have not entered any value in this field, that's why this error object has this required property. But if we enter some value in this field and now if I submit this form, now on this first name field, for that errors object, we will not have any value. So now this errors object is set to null. Okay, so every validator returns an error code when the validation fails on a form control and we can see that error code in the errors object of the form control. Now let's take another example. So on this email form control, we are using two validators. The first validator is the required validator and the second validator is the email validator. So if I go to VS code, you can see that on this email form control, we are using this required validator and this email validator. So currently for this email control, for this errors object, you will see that we only have one property, this required property. And again, this required property is nothing but the error code for the required validator. Now, if we go ahead and enter some value in this field, and if I submit this form, let's expand this form group, let's expand this controls, this personal details, Again, let's expand these controls and let's expand this emails form control. Now you will notice that this errors object has another property, which is email. So the required property has been removed and this email property has been added for this errors object. And again, this email is nothing but the error code for the email validator. So since here we have not entered a valid email address, the email validator has failed. And when it has failed, it has returned this error code, this email error code. Now, if we enter a proper email address here, and now if I submit this form, and now let's again go to this email form control. Now you will notice that now this errors property is set to null because here both required validator and email validator has passed. So no error code was returned. And that's why we don't see any error code inside this errors object. It is set to null. All right, now let's go ahead and let's learn how to create our own custom validators. For that, let's go to Angular documentation. Let's go to this doc section and here let's search for validators. And let's open this validator and let's click on this see more. So you will notice here that a validator is nothing but a method. Okay, so for example, let's search for the required validator. So here we have this required validator and this required validator is nothing but a method. And this method takes a parameter of type abstract control and it is going to return a value of type either validation errors or null. So just like this, we can create our own custom validators. Now here what I want is, let me refresh the page. So in this first name and last name control, the user should not be able to enter a space. So for example, let's say the first name of the user is John. So after John, if he enters a space like this, in that case, this form control should not be valid. 
in the same way if we enter something like john smith here also in this value we have a space so in that case also this form control should not be valid so in this control the user should able to enter only a string value without any space and same is true for this last name control as well here also the user should only be able to enter a string value without any space if he enters space in that case this form control should not be valid now we do not have any built in angular validator which can validate this kind of scenario so to validate this use case we are going to create our own custom validator so let's go to vs code and here in this app component class i am going to create a method and i'm going to call this method no space allowed okay now this method is going to receive a control so let's call the parameter as control and it is going to be of type form control inside this method let's write an if statement so let's say if the value of this control is not null and if the value does not contain a space and to check that we can use index of method and to this we can pass this space character so if this value contains a space in that case this index of method will return an integer value but if this value does not contain a space in that case it will return minus 1 so if this expression is not equal to minus 1 that means this value contains a space so in that case we want to return an error code from this if condition from this no space allowed method so here let's say return then let's use curly braces and here let's specify an error code and let's call this error code maybe no space allowed and let's set it to true so we want to return this error code otherwise we want to return null and in this way we have created our own custom validator it is as simple as that now let's see how to use this validator on a form control so we want to use this validator on the first name and last name form control so on this first name and last name we are already using this required validator so when we want to use more than one validator in that case we need to use an array right and inside that array we can specify more than one validators so here the validator name is no space allowed so here let's say this dot no space allowed and let's go ahead and let's use that no space allowed validator on the last name as well so this dot no space allowed with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page here let me enter some value okay so this is a proper value now if i enter a space and if i click outside you will notice that there is a red border around this form control that means this form control is not valid but if i remove that space in that case that red border will be removed now let me add a space here and here let's go ahead and let's submit this form and let's expand this form group let's expand controls then this personal details and here we have this first name control so you will notice that this error object has a property called no space allowed and what is this no space allowed it is the error code which we are returning from this no space allowed method from this custom validator right we are returning this object so this error code and that's what you will see here but if I remove this space from here and now if I submit this form in that case we should not have any value for this errors property so now you will notice that this errors property is set to null because on this first name control we have used two validators the required validator and no space allowed validator and both of these validators has passed so they have not returned any error code and that's why this errors object is set to null now we can also use this error codes in our app for displaying dynamic error messages let's understand this so let's go to vs code and let's go to app component.html 
Now on this input element, on this first name, we have two validators. So first of all, this input element is a required field. That means the user must enter some value for this field. And if the user does not enter any value, in that case, we want to display a custom validation error message. For that, let's use the small element here. And here, let's say first name is a required field. And let's open this app component.css here. And for this small element, let's set some CSS. So here, I simply want to set the text color to red. All right. So we want to display this custom validation error message if the user has not entered any value in this first name text box. But if the user has entered some value in this first name text box, and if it contains a space, then in that case, we want to display another custom validation error message. And here we want to say first name cannot contain a space. Okay. So we want to display this custom validation error message if the required validator fails. And we want to display this custom validation error message if the no space allowed validator fails. Right. So on this small element, let's use ng if directive. And here, let's first access the first name form control. So let's copy this reactive form property. And on this property, let's call the get method. And to this get method, let's pass the form control name. Now, this first name form control, it is present inside this personal details form group. So this personal details form group has this first name form control. So here we can say personal details dot first name. And this control is going to have an errors property. And this errors property is going to have a required property. And this required property will be there for this errors object if the required validator fails. If the required validator does not fail, in that case, we will not have this required property. Right. So if the required validator fails, in that case, this required property will be set with the value true and that true will be returned and this ng if will be set with the value true. So in that case, this custom validation error message will be displayed. Let's use this same expression on this small element as well. And let me again move it to a separate line so that it will be readable. And here we want to check for this error code, no space allowed. So let me copy this error code and let's use it here. So if this errors object has this no space allowed property, that means the user has entered a space in the first name text box control. So it will return true and in that case, this validation error message will be displayed. But if the user has not entered a space in the text box, in that case, there will be no property called no space allowed on this errors object. Right? Now, let's say the user has entered a proper value in the first name text box and that value also does not contain any space. In that case, this errors object will be set to null. And here on that null value, we are trying to access this required property and this no space allowed property. So in that case, we will get an error. And to avoid that error here, we can handle null reference. And for that, we can use null equalizing operator like this using a question mark and a dot. Now what this will do is if this errors is set to null, this operator will not evaluate any further expression. So once it is null, these expressions will be ignored. But if it is not null, in that case, the further expression will be evaluated. And same is true for undefined also. If this errors object is undefined, in that case also, this null equalizing operator will stop further evaluation of the expression. All right. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. And here you will notice that initially it is displaying first name is a required field. That's because we have not entered any value in this form control. Let's go ahead and let's enter some value. So let's say John. So you will notice that that validation error message is gone. Now, as soon as I enter a space here, you will notice that 
another validation error message first name cannot contain a space has been displayed here so based on the error code returned by the validator which is stored in the errors object of the form control we are displaying a custom validation error message if this errors object contains a required error code in that case this validation error message will be displayed and if this errors object contains this no space allowed error code in that case this validation error message will be displayed so this is how you can use an error code in your application to display dynamic validation error messages this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day